Hello ladies and gents, before we start this show, um, I forgot to say something during the whole show and basically this episode is a celebration of the 50 episodes we've had, in, or the 49 episodes we've had before that, so welcome to episode number 50 and what I'd like to say is at alphamovement.co slash 50, so alphamovement.co slash 50, just numbers 50, you'll find a complete guide of every single useful piece of advice that I've ever taken from each and every guest so sorry what what i should say is one piece of advice from each and every guest so enjoy that guys and i'll see you on the other side hello and welcome to the alpha movement podcast and today's a very very special show for me Um, basically it is episode number 50 of the podcast so i just wanted to a make this a bit special for you um and b just say a massive massive huge like from the bottom of my heart thank you to each and every one of you who is listening to this right now and um the guys that have ever supported me in any particular way like um without turning this into what should be an oscar speech like i have experienced huge huge personal growth from this podcast and without each and every one of you um i wouldn't be able to do this and i wouldn't be able to meet the cool people speak to the cool people and put this out to you guys and in turn help you so um yeah a massive massive thank you um what i wanted to do is give you a lesson from each of the podcasts that i've recorded and these are my lessons basically the lessons that i taught there's um i took from them sorry they're um so they're not very practical. Well, some of them are very practical, some of them are very specific, but other of them are very general and applicable to a variety of different environments and examples and, and different means throughout life. Like the, I find the more we look at these lessons, the more we find that they're applicable to a very wide spectrum of ideas. And each and every one of these guests that's come on here has given me such a brilliant episode and such huge huge um rewards and lessons from them so these are my lessons there are other lessons that will be subjective to the person so you might listen to these episodes and get a completely different thing um uh, well in a lot of them you will get a very very different lesson but this is just what i took um so yeah i just want to say thank you before we start to each and every one so 50 lessons from 50 podcasts the first episode was um is three hours, um, three minutes, 20 seconds long, something like that. And it took me about two hours to record. It was fucking ridiculous. Um, I would say go back and listen to it, but I'm so embarrassed by it. So, um, do me a favor and don't listen to it. It's, um, it's a weird episode. It's so shit. But the lesson I took from this was just get out of your comfort zone. Like this was the start of a huge thing for me. Um, a huge podcast. Uh, kind of thing and like a very successful podcast which is which is weird because most podcasts don't make it past seven but i think if you don't start if you don't get out of your comfort zone initially you'll never get anywhere that you really want to be the second episode was from paul mcgregor paul is a guy that i met on a course with the guy in the next um in the next lesson or the next podcast episode liam britton but paul um his his big thing was, or the thing that he talked about in this episode was that his dad passed away. Okay, um, and I believe his dad committed suicide as well, which he won't mind me sharing because he shared it on the podcast. But the, it's sorry to start off with a very sober, somber lesson, um, but it's never worth leaving this world. There's always such positive things that we can do. Um, there's always a way out. Um, so I suppose this is a, it's a very kind of deep start to the episode, but I think it's. Um, a quite a fitting start as well. Now, in episode three, I was with Liam Britton. Liam was at the time my business coach, and he kind of taught me that not everything has to be planned. Like, this podcast was never planned the way it was going to go. Like, to be fair, to begin with, I kind of, I vaguely knew the questions that I wanted to ask, but I never had them written down or anything. Um, and not every adventure we have in life, not every mission we take on every goal we have needs to be directly planned out this the growth of this podcast has never been very systematic and that's what Liam kind of taught me is his idea to actually start this podcast in the first place but I find that some things have to be very very specific so if you want 
exceptional results, then the planning is kind of essential. If the if you want very good results, you can get by with a little less planning. And sometimes the spontaneity is what gives something its freedom. Okay. Number four was Hugh Robinson. Hugh is a very good friend of mine. Um, we've been through kind of similar areas in our life, and he's his big thing. This is a kind of more more training based thing. Um, his big thing that I kind of took away was to have fun when you're training. So much, so many of us kind of lose the fun, lose the love of training. Um, and and Hugh kind of really taught us to to move well, to have fun, to um, to enjoy the time that we get to move our bodies. Episode number five was James Moody. Um, all of these guys, including the next one as well, um, I met at Liam Britton's event. And um, actually, no, James, I met at a, a different event. But um, James, basically, I, and again, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this. He, in his own words, used to bully kids at school and he used to be a bit of a shit by the sounds of things. Um, but... He is such a kind, generous guy now. Um, very introspective, very, um, thoughtful. And the lesson I kind of took from this is that it's, it's possible to change who you are. Like, if you really want to be something, someone different, then that's 100% possible. Number six was Shane Nugent. Shane is, um, for those of you who didn't listen to the episode, he is a very knowledgeable guy about nutrition. Now, I really mean that. He's he's incredibly knowledgeable. He really knows his shit. Um, and I think the the big point I took away from this again, a very practical, fitness orientated um, point is to or health orientated point is to plan your nutrition around your training. Um, something I hadn't done before was was that, and that really really helped. Episode number seven. I'm, I'm laughing because this is with Liam Britton's partner, actually, um, Samantha Chapman. Now, Sam, <laughs> like, before we started the show, oh, fuck. Um, yeah, I'll just tell you guys anyway. Um, at that point, I was in a really bad place, um, financially. I just didn't have any money coming in. I was in a really awful place. I just couldn't, like, get my head around where I was and where I wanted to be. And Sam performed an impromptu, um, chat with me and an impromptu, what's the right word? Um, intervention with me, I think is the best way of putting it. And she just called me out on my bullshit. She told me stuff that I knew was true, but I just didn't want to hear. I was, it was horrible hearing that unless I pulled then or it was horrible hearing someone who I trusted and knew to be true telling me that if I didn't sort my shit out, my girlfriend was going to leave me soon. And that was, um, it was a kick up the ass. But um, I suppose the lesson I took from it was that you can use fear to your advantage. Okay, fear doesn't have to be a negative thing. You can use it, but it only lasts for a very short term. Okay. The next episode was Simon Lovell. Simon Lovell is a fitness coach, um, sorry, a, um, a guy who coaches entrepreneurs. And he used to be a personal trainer, but now he coaches kind of fit pros to to take a big leap. Okay, and to be honest, that was the lesson he taught me to take a big leap without jumping for Simon, like asking Simon to come on the show, who at the time was um, a big guest for me to have on. He had, he had the biggest reach, I think, out of anyone. Um, so without asking to him to come on, he put me in touch with AJ Roberts. Now AJ opened up the stage to all kinds of guests like anyone from like Zach Evanesh to like um to all of the CrossFit guys like uh Brian McKenzie and um Kelly Starrett like he put me in touch with those guys so without taking one leap I never would have got the other so taking a big leap is essential episode number nine episode number nine was with Lee Carter. Lee is a coach at CrossFit Cambridgeshire. Um, he's, and he also owns high performance programming. I think he co-owns actually, but he's an excellent coach. And the, the lesson I took from that, um, was there's a huge difference between being an athlete and just exercising. Okay. There's, there's a big difference between training and exercising. And it actually really kind of confirmed in my mind at that point, but I didn't want to be an athlete. I didn't want to be training three times a day in order to get to a place that I would like in order to compete at the CrossFit Games. It wasn't that important to me. So just knowing that was 
incredibly, incredibly important. The next episode was my first one by myself. Okay, number 10, um, truth be told, I'd run out of guests and I couldn't get a guest in it. And I thought, oh shit, I've got to do it. And it kind of forced my hand. Um, and the, the episode was about 13 success principles. And I thought I was going to look back on these, doing the research for this episode, I thought I was going to look back on these and think, God, I don't really believe these. I don't really kind of, um, maybe I've changed since then. Because I definitely have have changed emotionally and as a person. Um, so I thought it was going to have changed. But looking back on it, they were 100% true. I think each and every one of them really still rings true. There's an article about it on the on the website. But the lesson I took from this actually was kind of arose whilst I was recording this. And that was that you create your own success, uh, success sorry, um, like whatever, like as I was writing that, I thought, yeah, this is, this is entirely possible for anyone to do this. And because I realized the traits shared by the most successful people in the world, and like very rarely genetic. Okay. The, the traits they share are hard work essentially and, and a love of the journey. The next episode I had was Vicky Marsh. Vicky is my favorite physio to see. Um, and she's an awesome practitioner. Um, and the big lesson, another physical one or another practical one was heal, mobilize and strengthen. That's a little slogan that she uses. Little, that's a bit patronizing. Um, that was, that's her slogan that she uses. That's her, um, philosophy as to between not only, not only, um, her, her practice, but also her life as well. So, Healing an injury first, letting it heal, make sure it's all good, and then mobilizing, so feeding slack into the system, and then strengthening. So yeah, you can see how that applies into in a variety of different areas as well. The next guest was was I've already mentioned him, AJ Roberts. AJ is kind of one of the guys I really think of when I hear the word successful. He's really kind of nailed it at the moment. He's an ex um he was well, a world record holder to begin with um but crossfit athlete bodybuilder very successful in business was a really nice guy and at the end of the podcast he went on this i was going to say rant but it was inspiring it was beautiful it was a just fantastic talk on what it meant to be alive and what you can give and and like like who you can be and the big message, the take home message was you only have one chance at this. So who are you going to be? I remember him saying, so who are you going to be? And that's, that's one of the big ones that like when I was thinking about this, that was the first thing when I was even before I'd gone through the episodes, that was the first one that kind of pinged to mind. I think you, you've only got one chance and there's, there's some stuff that's happened. It really isn't my story to tell. Um, but the idea that you only have one chance is, is very resonant with me. Okay. And I'll leave it there. The next episode, <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's it's another one of my friends, Eddie Eddie Willett. Um, change of gear. Tell you what, change of gear. Um, but the, the kind of the the reason I'm laughing is because I realised at that point that podcasting or work or the stuff that you do on a daily basis for for all, like anyone who doesn't have a podcast, which is most people, um, the work you do it doesn't have to be boring, like. I, I loved recording this episode with Eddie. I basically pissed around with him and people got a lot of value from it. We really laughed. Um, and, um, yeah, it was one of those ridiculous conversations that's for some reason has been recorded. The next, um, next episode was another one of my solo ones. So your questions answered. I'm not going to do all of my solo ones because you can just go back and listen to them. Um, but what episode was that? That was number 14. And that was the 24 hour athlete continuum, um, that I kind of, I drew from that. The idea being that you have not just the hour that you're at the gym, not just the 15 minutes at a time you're eating, but the whole day to have the mindset of an athlete and to get where you want to be. You can either work for one twenty fourth of your life for that hour that you're in the gym, or you can bring your whole life towards it and, um, really kind of make massive leaps that way. Next guest was, Chris Fisher. And Chris is actually another person I think of when I hear the word successful. He is an incredibly insightful man. And he also gave a piece of advice to me that I think about regularly. Um, and 
it was one of those moments where you, you hear some advice and you think, ah, oh, this is one of those moments. This is one of those things that I should really remember. And it really struck a chord with me. He said to me, you can't change what happens, only how you react to it. And I thought that was so succinct and so beautiful and so elegant that I, I really kind of remembered that. And he's also kind of a symbol of certain elements of success for me because he lives with his wife and kids and he has a beautiful relationship with all of them. He's very Zen in, in as much as he's very present. And I really enjoyed our conversations and I still enjoy our conversations. He's an ex personal training client of mine and he's fantastic on a complete flip. Um, in terms of Zen and chilled out, the next guest I had was Zach Evanesh. Zach is like for those of you you don't know Zach just go and check him out go and check out the episode I did with him like if you want motivation if you want a bit of fire in your belly like fucking go and see Jack um Zach sorry Jack who's Jack um Zach like the the lesson I took is motivation is internal but he's just this fire of of energy and willingness to kind of stand up for what he means and believes in and like that in itself was truly amazing being around like listening to that i remember looking like now as i'm recording the podcast what i can see is as i speak there's obviously the lines going up that dictate the volume the depth of my voice and all that kind of stuff and when i'm recording a podcast with a guest i have two of those lines that are my voice and two of those lines that are um the voice of the guest and it scrolled i scrolled out the end and I could see tiny little flickers of my voice and huge, great barrages of, of Zach's voice. He was a fantastic guest and just full of passion and joy and gratitude. And it was a brilliant episode. After that, I went to episode number 17 with Dr. Kirk Parsley. Now, Doc Parsley was the first guest. Actually, I, know, I think AJ might have done a TED Talk, but I think uh, Doc Doc Parsley's definitely done a TED Talk. Ex Navy SEAL, brilliant man, um, really got me to value my sleep before this, but the idea that he reinforced is that sleep is a priority and it's non negotiable. It's an essential part of every single day. And if you're not sleeping, you are not going to be your optimal version. Okay. Episode eighteen was a solo episode and I, I can't be asked, just go and go and listen to that one again because I did it as much service as I could in that one. 19. Chris Akabusi, Olympic medalist, um, gold medalist in the relay, I think. And <laughs> such a funny bloke. Um, the lesson again, I'm, I'm laughing again looking at this. Um, the lesson I took from it was do your research because, well, basically this is a little shout out to my friend Dave Pierman. Before we started the show, I said, is there anything you want to ask Chris? And he said to me, ask him about saying a wooga. And I was like, oh yeah, that's his catchphrase, isn't it? That's his catchphrase. So I did the whole podcast in the back of my mind. I was just like, just get Chris to say a wooga. Get Chris to say a wooga. Go on, keep it going. And like, I was just like, I wrote it down and I had it in front of me. And I was, it was like, should I say it? It's like a bit of a dickish move asking, asking him to say a catchphrase from the nineties. Um, anyway, it got to the end of the podcast. Really, really insightful podcast. And I said to him, Oh, so my friend would, uh, would kill me if I didn't ask this. So can you, uh, um, can you say your catchphrase, a wooga? And there was a moment of silence and I thought, oh shit, he's really angry with me. And he just burst out laughing. This was the first time that I ever edited anything from the show. He just burst out laughing and he said, mate, that was John Fashionu. John Fashionu <laughs> was an ex football player or was a football player, the first openly gay football player in the, in the, um, English Premier League, I think. And, um, that he said that was his his saying. He said, "Same color, different bloke." And I was just the cringiest moment of the podcast. Um, it was very funny though to look back on though. Like my face went completely red. Um, but he laughed and laughed and laughed. And then he said his true catchphrase, which was "Oh yeah," um, which was pretty cool. After that, I had Mister Corey Johnson. Corey. Basically, he was the guy that did the branding for my website and the, and all my branding. And he still kind of helps me out with a few bits and pieces. And he's such a nice bloke. Okay. That's the, the, that is the, the number one point is, it's just how to be a really fucking cool guy by Corey. Like he's, um, he's just someone that everyone gets on with. He's very chilled. He's, um, he's just very relaxed. He's always himself. I don't think I've ever seen him trying to be someone he's not. He's, 
He's very chilled out and relaxed. And that's why I had him in the show. Number 21 was um, a, a book review that I did of the Prime Blueprint. And the Prime Blueprint at the time was like changing the way or reaffirming everything that I believed. And it's a brilliant book by Mark Sisson. So I thought I'd do it justice by giving it a bit of a book review. And honestly, it was a complete flop and the lesson i took from it was sometimes just things don't work out no worries like it happens shit happens so that's cool um like i would recommend going to get it episode number 22 was with mr drew jackson now drew he's again a very very good friend of mine um i love speaking to him i love being his friend and i really must get in contact with him soon but you don't need to know that and I left that conversation feeling incredibly inspired to do more. And at that point, I realized that all the inspiration I needed, all the inspirational people were right in front of me. They weren't just the huge guests, the people, sorry, I'm just uh, changing my position. The people that have made it in air quotes, the people that have got huge followings and have got like massive incomes. They're all the people that are around me too. So Drew really inspired me and inspiration doesn't necessarily just come from the top. Um, the next episode was a biohacking one by myself. And then I went on to episode 24 with Alan Reed. And he just really taught me to move well. Like the importance of moving heavy shit and doing hip dominant actions and just being a bit more fucking primal, like being true to your nature. I think that's the big thing I took from Alan's lesson. And then I did another successful, um, sorry, it's another solo um, episode on successful habits. And then I had two of the guests that I was most nervous about. I, I interviewed them back to back, actually. I finished one, put the phone down or put Skype down, and then went straight on to the next one. Um, and the first one was Brian McKenzie. Now, Brian has really shaped my career. He wrote a book called Power Speed Endurance. And his approach to endurance training not only facilitated me getting into the Royal Marines and passing out with no no injuries because I was training properly, but also it influenced me in all the training I did with my clients. Like this, it's very simple, easy to understand, um, easy to focus on book, um, and very elegantly written. Um, really, kind of showed me who I like like how good programming could be really and and for that i can't thank him enough but the the real lesson i took from from speaking to brian was to feel like he's so so good at understanding that you just got to feel your way through training um at that point i thought heart rate variability was like the big thing i should be measuring and i should be taking all these measurements the whole time but you as a human being are designed to be in touch with your body. You're never designed to go through self quantification, i.e. like having electrodes sticking off you and using so much technology. So just feeling your way through training, feeling your way through life, um, your body's got an incredible ability to tell you what it needs and you just have to step back and listen. After that, I spoke to Kelly Sturet. And there's kind of, I wanted to do one lesson per guest, okay? And there's kind of two here. One's a very practical, and one is a bit more kind of, um, but I suppose it's practical as well, but it's um, less just applicable to health. The the mainly practical one is, is to make mobility a daily habit, okay? It's that simple, like to perform regular maintenance on your body and to keep it that simple. However... The big thing is those of you who know me will know that I never fucking shut up about Kelly Starrett. He like is my complete idol within the coaching community. Um, I listen to everything he says. I really kind of respect what he's done. I respect that he's himself. I respect that he's inspired. And I, I respect that he's built a fantastic business and movement just off his beliefs. And I really, really like that. So the the other lesson was that sometimes you should meet your heroes. You hear that you hear that advice that you should meet your heroes. Honestly, he just stepped up and really kind of showed me what I should be doing, and like showed me how how um, authentic you can be. Next one was a an episode 
about the Time Poor Athlete program that I've still got going. Um, it's a bit difficult to find now, but if you head to alphamovement.co slash TTPA, there's a free 14-day course, I think it is. Um, so you can head there. And now, God, I almost welled up thinking about that. Um, episode number 29, not not the Time Poor Athlete, but this one coming. Um, the next episode was with Chris Moore. Now, I, I honestly don't know what to say about Chris. He's someone that was incredibly, again, influential on what I've done, who I am as a person. Like, that's, that's more, he's, he's influenced who I am as a person. And for someone to do that who you've never met, someone that you've, you've never, like, spoken to face to face, um, someone that you just listened to in your ears on a podcast, like, that is such a, a powerful thing. Okay. And the reason why I almost welled up talking about this is about two weeks or three weeks after after we recorded this podcast Chris passed away just so unexpectedly I think it was 34 at the time leaving behind kids and and a, and a wife um, and I found I found out about this on holiday with my girlfriend and her family and it just wiped me out for about 36 48 hours a, a man who I'd never spoken to like was well, I spent an hour speaking to, and what touched me is he was so generous with with his time. Like I, I'm just some guy from the UK that like wants to ring him up and pick his brains for an hour, and he is a very successful, or at that point was a very successful podcaster, author, someone not only one step above the rung on, on the ladder of me, but many many on a whole new fucking ladder and to speak to him like uh, to speak to him was a huge privilege to begin with and the fact that when his internet died and i offered him to to go and do it another day and to come back to him he chose to drive to a coffee shop um another 15 minutes go completely out of his way and resume recording from there so for someone like that to go out their way to help someone like me and I know I probably should have some more self-worth there but that was that was uh truly touching and the fact that he passed away so soon after like it it just showed me that our time is limited and that's the that's what we kind of do here I've always I've already mentioned this and just but the time is so fucking short here um so sorry to get all fucking what's the right word too deep into this but like what Chris showed me and continues to show me because I still think about him and his message quite a lot um was that you should do something every day that you love doing and just try and get a little bit better of it um and that's that's the real thing he taught me so after that I did another episode on mobility um by myself and I just thought that was um again still mobility like I'm sitting here now well I'm sitting here now with one leg straight and one leg up but I was just sitting here um in cross legs because I'm trying to increase my hip rotation and I think it's something we should really make part of our lives. Following that I had Dr. Andy Galpin on the show. Andy is an incredibly clever bloke again. He is very good friends with Chris Moore, actually, which is very strange having them on one after the other. Um, in fact, they're housemates, and we spoke about that in our most recent episode, um, which I may not have written down. Oh, no, I haven't released it yet. That's the only thing. Um, yeah, so Andy is a is a is an incredibly knowledgeable guy, and the big lesson I took from him is that science doesn't have to be boring. He made it so interesting to speak to him um, and to kind of find out about things that are traditionally looked upon as boring, like, oh, let's talk about lactic acid. and But he, he just made it really interesting. And the fact that you don't have to have this perception of science is boring. After that, I did a quick episode on motivation. And then I had what's my most downloaded episode and one of my favourite episodes to record with Julien Pinot. Um, apart from feeling all um, <laughs> romantic about the episode because of his French accent and his way of words and his philosophy. Um, Julian taught me real movement and the idea that we've got to do real movement. You've got to lift heavy shit. Like I spoke about this, I touched upon it when I'm talking about Alan Reed, but speaking to Julian, he just put it into a very different realm. 
he he really taught it about moving and and why it's important to move well and like there's it honestly like if I was going to say go back and listen to one episode that would be it um just listen to him chat about what it means to be strong and also um why <laughs> why american coffee is shit he talks about that um which um which I I neither agree with or disagree with um but he's um, he's just a funny, nice bloke, and I'm hoping to get him on for a part two at some point. Next time I went, um, on the next episode I had with Eddie Willett again, um, a part two with Eddie, and um, sometimes you can fuck around too much. That was my point from this. Um, literally, this was just an excuse for me to chat with Eddie, um, and it wasn't really work. Um, there's some good stuff that came out of it, but it was just a good fucking laugh with him. After that, I probably had my favourite episode to research, um, because it was just me chatting about books, okay? For those of you who know me, you'll know that I love books. I am surrounded by books right now, and the fact that I got to spend an hour, well, an hour, that's gen, um, very conservative, probably about three or four hours reading my favourite books, again, going through the notes that I'd, I'd made on them, um, and submerge, submerging? Yeah, um, submerging myself in that book, in these books again, just made me a very, very happy man. So, I think, because I didn't actually write a um, lesson down there, I think educate yourself is probably the lesson there. Um, where, however you, however you really, this is something I made in the, or a point that I made in the episode, but however you choose to educate yourself and how you get educated and learn best, just do that every time you learn something, you just become a better person. After that, I had John Compton. John Compton is an incredibly passionate, brilliant man, actually. Um, I love my chat with him. Um, he's now, he's running a very successful gym, an online program, and um, he's, a, he's like a very interesting bloke. But where he's come from, from being a smack addict, being homeless, uh, being, as I said, on heroin, to having a fantastic life and where he is now like transitioning through the army being kicked out of the army that in itself is such a powerful message and um, I know a lot of people still listen to that and draw inspiration out of that so John thank you um, the lesson I really think that you should take from that is no matter how hard you have it there's always a way out next one episode number 37 was all about resilient jiu-jitsu and I look back at this now and I think God, I was so naive. But really the lessons that I was taking from it is find something you love, find some real movement and do that. It's, um, jiu-jitsu is becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger part of my life. Um, I think about it constantly and I think it's because of the idea that it's a real kind of strong movement. Um, and, um, it's just a, it just makes you more of a man, I think. And if you're, if you're not a man, I think it just, gives you a bit more confidence I, th I think it's a really good thing to be doing and i think everyone should really know how to fight off that i had Corey gregory on now Corey is a huge name in fitness but i'll be honest i knew his story but i didn't really know a lot about what he taught and his beliefs his story is that he came from coal mining and ended up where he is now which is a fitness model which is like a huge kind of personality in the fitness industry um, but what he really taught me is your limits that you have are really just stories and the stories you tell yourself um, like whether it's like he squatted every day for a year um, and conventional wisdom says that you'll never recover you'll never get any better because you'll just be overtrained but he proved that wrong with some intelligent programming and that limit was just a story to him as is episode 39 um, Emily Knowles she is a trained psychologist. Um, she's a fucking awesome person. It's a very short podcast with her, but it's, it's really powerful. And again, limits the stories is, is what I took from her. Stories that you're telling yourself stop you from being where you want to be. Emily, she, she is, um, she had a, a condition as a child where she pulled her own hair out. And now she is a, um, like completely brilliant person and to see that transition and she just stopped herself doing it. I think she said she's the only person she knows who's stopped completely pulling her own hair out and she sorted herself out, which is hugely inspiring to see. The next episode was Dan Meredith. For those of you who don't know Dan, he describes himself as a surprisingly successful entrepreneur. Um, he, and he's just that he's, he's himself. 
Um, he's a big hairy fucker who laughs and takes a piss and makes inappropriate jokes and is just generally funny and un- or oh, <laughs> he's not politically correct, I think is the best way to put it. Um, and for that reason, I think it's like, he basically, he changed conventional wisdom. That's what I liked about him. He's, you don't have to be a suit with a head on it to, to do well. He's just a bloke that decided that he wants to be successful. And you know what he is? And he does it for very noble reasons. Um, to look after his sister who's, um, who's not well. And I think he's an incredibly brave man for doing that. And he's, um, an inspiration to me, as is pretty much everyone who's been on the show, actually. After that, I recorded Success uh, Secrets. It was a solo one by myself. Um, and then Don D'Agostino, like, again, a, like, a guest that's been on, um, a guest that's been on Tim Ferriss's podcast, which is huge for me. I like, that means, that means a lot that he's been on that and he's decided to come on my podcast. And he talks about ketosis and the ketogenic diet and how it's applicable. And he comes from a very scientific background. It's a very heavy subject, actually. Um, but it's fantastic. It really is good. So as a, as a practical standpoint, he talks about his pre-workout. Okay, so his, um, I think it was 15 grams of dark chocolate, um, and some BCAAs before he starts, uh, before he starts training. And then after that, I think the big point to take is giving yourself a creative space. Okay. What he meant by that is he's disciplined enough to give himself some time every day to take time out and think about what he wants to be. And yeah, I think that's, that's it or who he wants to be not what he wants to be who he wants to be give me a second once to grab some water because after 35 minutes of talking my voice is hoarse mmm delicious water <sighs> so Don Dags you know giving himself creative space I think that's a very important thing that we can each each and every one of us can take into our life whether it's in relationships or business or work or training, just giving yourself space to recover. Okay. After that, I, I actually released an episode of the Recondi- Reconditioned podcast with, um, with my friend Hugh Robinson, who I spoke about in episode number four. Um, and he invited me on his show as a guest and we just ranted and raved about the power of education. Um, and I just discovered how, how fucked up the education system is really. Like after speaking aloud um, or thinking aloud on it for so long, like it just, it just revealed to me how fucked up it is and how despairing like, I am about it. Um, after that, Brandon Cliff came on the show. Good old Aussie Brandon. Um, <laughs> and the lesson he taught me is I really fucking wish like, I shouldn't be releasing this to worldwide, but I really wish that I didn't have thousands of outstanding and um, thousands of dollars worth of outstanding speeding fines in Australia. I wish I could go back. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm probably going to stay safe and stay out of Oz. Um, sorry if there's any Australian officials li- uh, listening to this. After that, um, I spoke about altitude masks, some really kind of geeky shit um and also i think i think i touched on stoicism in this one as well and like talking talking about that stuff realized made me realize that i love being a nerd i love just geeking out and shit okay um and like embracing who i am so i think you guys should too I, that's that's honestly it like i'm a nerd through and through i love geeking out on shit that kind of is fascinating to me and Whatever your kind of nerdiness is, whatever your, your side that you don't really feel comfortable showing, that's the side that people are drawn towards and that's the side that people love. Episode number 46 was Paul Burgess. Almost there, folks. Um, Paul Burgess is, um, he runs athletic nutrition and it's a very scientific, very, what's the right word? Um, yeah, very scientific approach to nutrition. There's still a cheat sheet up about it if you find his podcast episode on the website. Um, but if you want quick change, you have to test things. That's the, that's the big point that I took from it. Yeah, you've got to test. If you want quick, massive change, test things, find out your markers. And it's like, in, it's like a complete dichotomy between his approach and Brian McKenzie's approach of feeling versus science. Okay. And I think the, the truth, the, 
the real area to aim at is the grey area in between, which is obviously more difficult. But I think that's where the real benefits are. Not to say that either of them are wrong, but I think there's there's benefit in both of them. So combining them together, both um, both Brian McKenzie's and Paul Burgess's thoughts, I think you can gain a lot from it. After that, we have Dr. Kirk Parsley on again. I got him on for number two because I find him fascinating and he's the kind of bloke that I just want to be friends with. Um, but like, again, the, the real lesson was like, prioritize your sleep. Like, above all else, prioritize your sleep. But the real, the, the lesson that I learned, the lesson that I took from it, because remember I said these are my lessons, is that don't, do 50 calories on the airdyne about 5-10 minutes before you're supposed to be starting a podcast recording because it will fuck you over and it's horrendous um, it's because I could still taste sick in my mouth when we were recording that podcast and I was still shaking and I was not in a good place it's the only podcast I've done sitting down apart from these solo ones after that I had episode number 48 the bearded crossfitter aka Adam Ratcliffe um, XPT client of mine really nice bloke um, and why I had him on the show, if you haven't listened to it, is because he fell in love with the journey. He really embraced every single aspect. He did exactly what he was told. He listened to the experts and became who he wanted to become just through being, just through doing what he's told. And that simplicity and that consistency has proved to be his, his making, I think is the best way of putting it. And for that reason, I loved having him on the show. And then the most recent episode before this one was Louis Villasenor. God, I said it without a French accent the first time ever. Um, Louis is a fantastic bloke. He owns Keto Gains. And the lesson he, ta- he taught me was very simple. Ketosis is the way forwards. Like that, I really believe that. I believe that a high fat diet for 90, maybe 85% of people is the thing to look at. I think that like looking at all the evidence now, I think that looking at how everyone I know who's really ad- adapted to it and no, who's really taken it on, utilised it as it should be, has done fantastically well. And I think just looking at from an evolutionary point of view and a scientific point of view, I think that is like ketosis is the way forwards. And now it's episode number 50. So <laughs> more lessons, guys. Like again, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you, not only for listening through this podcast, um, but kind of helping me become this person I am now, who's hugely different to the person I was 50 episodes ago. Um, so to each and every one of you and to each and every guest that's ever been on the show and who, each and every one of you who is now listening to this and it's in the past, thank you. Like I really do appreciate all your effort and all your, your following me on the journey. So thank you very much. Summed up all of these taught me five lessons the five big lessons number one fear is bullshit like at the beginning of this i was so scared and i got better and i realized that the fear was nothing okay when people start training programs they realize that fear is the thing holding them back and then they blast through that fear they get through their limiting beliefs and they come out stronger on the other side okay the second lesson is that life is short Okay, like I pointed out with Chris, um, who is just an incredibly inspirational man to me. Life is short, so making the most of it and not wasting any time is something I want to kind of put out there. And on a similar note is number three, be grateful. Be grateful for everything you have. Be grateful for everything that you could have. Be grateful for everything you don't have. Um, very deep, but I, I truly think that gratitude is hugely underappreciated um we're hardwired to see negative situations and to kind of to try and get ourselves out of problems but the good news is you're not being chased by a saber-toothed tiger anymore so being grateful for everything that isn't that is a huge benefit you can take to your life especially if you're feeling very down now what i'd say is count your wins after that grow Grow as a person, grow as, grow in your career, grow physically, grow emotionally, grow in knowledge. Just growth is a key to life. Like listen to what Tony Robbins said, um, or says and just grow as a person. And 
the last point, I think that kind of encapsulates all of those. No matter where you are now, you are capable of getting better. So that applies to the people who are at the very beginning of their journey. No matter how stuck in a rut you are, you are pure potential. And you, scientifically speaking, can be anyone you want to be. Okay, um, And even if you're at the top of the rung, keep getting better. And if you're anywhere in between, you know that you can get better because you've already done it and you can do it again. So that's kind of where I'd like to close out and say thank you again. Um, this, this, like, just because I've done 50 episodes does not mean the podcast is going anywhere. This is going to be huge. I can feel it coming. Like the, you guys, the audience, everyone listening to this has doubled every single month since we started this. And it, like, that means a huge amount to me. It also means that what we're doing here, what you guys are part of, is something very special. So, thank you again. Um, I can't say that enough. If you enjoyed this episode, please reach out on social media. Um, let me know. Tag me in the post. Tag the Alpha Movement in the post. Um, and yeah, I think that's... Um, yeah, we've got some future episodes with some guys on that are just phenomenal. Um, I would particularly say look forward to the ones with Brian Grasso and Carrie Campbell. Um, they're very, very good episodes. But again, like everything that I've recorded up until now, including um, Andy Galp and Jim Bagley is also a very good episode. Um, there's so much good shit coming. So find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash official, Twitter, um, find me, Tom Foxley, on Instagram, all over on Facebook as well. Add me as a friend if you want any advice, if you need uh, help in hand, if you just need a bit of guidance, like... I am here for you. I want to say thank you for you guys listening to this podcast. And from a very introspective, reminiscing uh, Tom, thank you for listening to another episode of the Alphabet Podcast. Something that I forgot to say after doing 45 minutes of flawless speaking was that there is a complete guide to everything that I mentioned, every single lesson of 50 ish um, episodes is going to go into like one easy sheet to see um, like so you've got every single episode that I've ever done and every single lesson from each of those episodes put down in one easy to reference place so if you head to alpha movement slash um, alpha movement.co slash 50 just five zero you'll get your free cheat sheet slash inspiration guide there so hello there and I'll see you soon for another episode